Hello, welcome to the Wealthy Trades Daily Market Forecast for May 29th, 2015. Let's get started right away. Yesterday we had, again, some volatility come back into the markets. Not a whole lot, but this sell-off, uh, this little minor sell-off that kind of started this week on Tuesday uh, is continuing slightly again we're just struggling around these levels that we've been struggling at we've kind of struggled to break through <coughs> um for a while but we are still technically okay technically in a downtrend it doesn't surprise me remember what typically happens this happens a lot we go into a downtrend <coughs> we're now trading back into that shift area so this is kind of that make or break area we're either going to this is going to be defended by the bears and we're going to push lower and they're going to try to confirm that by breaking, okay, so by breaking this pivot uh, that was created on Monday below 210.20, all right? So if the Bears can defend this level, all right, they cannot, just to let you know, the Bears can't, or the, yeah, the Bears can't let price get above about 213.78. If it does, then the Bulls are now in control. But if they defend that level, what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to aggressively push price below 210.20 to confirm this downtrend. Because right now, it's kind of in a wedging pattern. I think the Bears ultimately are going to lose the battle. Um, I do not believe that, uh, that that 210 is going to get broke. The key level to the downside, just so you know, again, the confirmation pivot is at 210.20. The real level that they want to, that the short-term level that they want to break it below is 208.62. That's that's kind of the level that they're looking for on a weekly basis. Okay, so this is interesting. On a weekly basis, a, a few months ago, it was it was difficult for the Bears to really gain some traction and and you know. I guess, gain some momentum on thinking that they could push this market into a downtrend on a longer-term weekly basis. But now they actually can because of the consolidation and, and kind of the, the difficulty that the bulls have had breaking above and, and continuing to rally this market. It's put in, we've put in a key pivot low that's much easier for the bears to break. What I mean by that is the pivot low that the bears are going to try, and again, I, I'm not, I don't think that they're going to succeed um, I think we're going to get a rally, but what the level we need to look out for uh, on a longer term basis, okay, and these, these pivots can typically last for very long periods of time, I'm talking months if not, you know, a year or longer, but the, the pivot low that we need to uh, pay attention to on the downside for longer term trading, swing trading, long term investments is 204 12, alright, that's the closest that that pivot low that we've been trying to defend that's the closest it's been in months and almost years. In fact, if we look back in the chart here, on uh, and we and we scroll out, uh, you know, all the way back to 2009, you can see that this thing has been in an uptrend. We shifted into a downtrend very slightly, just for for a, a very short amount of time uh, in early 2014, and then back into an uptrend. So as you can see, it takes a pretty aggressive move to the downside to shift into a downtrend. And here's the thing: like I said, that pivot low that we're def trying to defend, that the, the the bears want to do everything they can to push it below, and the bulls want to do everything they can to defend it, is is as close as it's been in a very long time. But again, I think. Ultimately, the bulls are still going to maintain control. I think we're going to see a nice rally higher to finish the year. Um, it might be the last leg in this big rally, this big aggressive bull market that we've been in for for the last four or five years. But all right, but I do see us heading slightly higher. Yesterday, what did we do? Uh, we had a decent day yesterday. Uh, wealthy trades. This has been a decent uh, week for our day trades. Uh, we were in a downtrend on the on the uh, dashboard, um, much like we are today. All right, what we did is we went short QEP. All right, QEP opened at 1894 and it closed at 1864. All right, so it was down about 30 cents, which is a great trade. So that's up uh, about 1.58 percent. And on the uh, long, so we paired that with a long position uh, that was uh, opened at 13085 and closed at 13013. So that was down slightly, but overall. Um, up about 0.4%, uh, give or take, um, in a market that was basically break-even. So, again, not a bad day at all for us. In fact, our weekly trades, which when I'll do our weekly recap uh, this weekend, but our weekly trades are once again performing extremely well. If you remember what we're doing on a weekly basis, we are, in fact, this weekend I'm going to do the recap of the week and the month. Our right, monthly trades are, are performing very well also. But for the week, if you remember what we are, we long uh, the XLV, um, the best stock in the XLV that we found was the UNH, and then we're short the XLE. The best stock in the XLE to short is SWN. That trade 
is doing uh, phenomenal. So I will recap that uh, this weekend. Let's figure out what we're doing today. All right, today uh, it's been a while since we've been in a downtrend with a quality above 50%. So that's uh, that's interesting, very interesting, especially sitting at all-time highs. It's kind of uh, oxymoronic, but again, the breadth of this rally hasn't been all that great, which is a little bit of a concern. But what we're doing today is we're going to take a directional bet only. We're going to take a directional trade because in a downtrend, quality above 50%. So therefore, we can feel free to short in the best sector. Okay, we don't need to do a parish trade. So I'm going to move... This, all the, the XLE and all these stocks over into my portfolio, and where I'm going to find the best shorting opportunity in the energy sector today. All right, so I'm moving all the eight stocks over into my portfolio, and I'm going to go and I'm going to look for the best opportunity here. Oh, I'm going to do my same pair down technique and just look at the levels to win profit and eliminate anything that doesn't make money on both sides. So, as you can see, um, Mer loses money on both sides, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Anything that doesn't make money on both sides, just get rid of and pare it down to the best opportunities that we can find. All right, Because what I know is if it loses money on one of the sides, one of the levels to win sides, then that tells me that, yes, it, it is in a downtrend, and it is a good stock to potentially short today because we're in a downtrend, but there's better stocks. For example, SWN closed at 2568. All right, it's in a downtrend, and historically on a Friday, it should move down to 25, 24, or up to 26, 12. It has a high probability of hitting the downside, which is great because in a downtrend, has a pretty good chance of closing below that. And when it hits this level, this is what we, we want to know. This is our first filter. When it hits this downside level, we want to know that it continues to trade in the down direction. All right, so when it hits this level, does it make money if we shorted there historically? The answer is yes. All right, we also want to know if it rallies up and it hits this 26.12, does it typically bounce off that and close lower? Why lower? Because we're in a downtrend. So we want to know that it, it hits it and closes lower. That's a profitable trade. If it does, so therefore it makes money, that's good. That's what we want to know. It, 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 it's another strength indicator that we use at Wealthy Trades to make sure that we're finding the best opportunities to go in the direction that we're looking to go in, and that's that's short. Right now, so these four all make money on the levels to win a profit, so that's good. But now the next filtering technique that we, we need to use is the spread between the levels on levels. And if you remember what this is, is the levels on levels is the probability of it closing above or below those levels. So in a downtrend, the trend side is below price, right? Below closing price. Closing price was 25.68. The trend side, because it's in a downtrend, is is 25.24. It's got a 23% probability of closing below that. That's good. We want a high probability of it closing below that level because we're going to look to short. It only has 11.5% probability of closing above 26.12. We want a very low number here because, again, we're looking to short. So we want a widespread. We want a high number, high probability on the trend side, and a low probability on the counter trend side on the levels on levels. So we want to find the one with the largest spread, all right? So this spread is, you know, what, 11.5%, 12%? Well, that's not as good as this one. This one is uh, 21%. So that one's any is better. All right, any is better than, than this, all right? Any is 21%. This is only about 17%. So any is better than that one. Let's look at APA. APA is only, you know, 15%. So any is our short opportunity today. What we know about any is it closed at $17.13 yesterday. It's got an expected downside low of $16.78. It hits that level, all right? That's good. That's the trend side because we're in a downtrend. It hits that level 57.7% of the time. It has a high probability of closing below that, which is awesome. And and when it hits that level, historically, shorting when it hits the downside level is a profitable trade. So if you decided that, you know what, I'm going to not get into anything today. I'm going to only trade the levels uh, levels to win levels. There's a lot of traders that just trade the levels, right? So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, I'm going to do a breakout trade, meaning I'm going to I'm gonna trade any. That's going to be my stock I trade. But my trade, I'm going to put a limit order to short, all right, at... 1678. Why would I put a limit order to short there? Because historically, when it hits the 1678, so I'm not going to get in the trade until it hits that. If it hits that, it typically makes money. It typically closes, uh, it sells off and closes below that level. There's a lot of traders out there that trade that way. Or you can do what's called the counter trend trade, meaning I'm going to short NE, but I'm going to wait. And the only level I'm going to short at is I'm going to put a limit order in to short at 1748. If price rallies up, hits 1748, I'm going to short there. Why? Because when it hits that level, again, historically, it bounces off and closes lower. I know that because of the profit. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually short at all three levels. So there's kind of three entries here. I'm going to short at the open. All right, because it's the best uh, best stock to short. I've got probability in my favorite. It hits the downside more often. 
I'm also I'm gonna I'm gonna add at the short position. If it hits 1678, I'm gonna add to the position. Or if it hits 1748, I'm gonna add to the position there too. So there is my day trade for the day. Short any. I'm gonna close it at the end of the day, but I'm gonna write it all day long. So that is my position in the weekly. We are still short SWN, long UNH, and then on the monthly. We've been long the XLV all month long. That's been a phenomenal outperformer compared to uh, the overall market. And then uh, uh, CAH, Cardinal Health, has also been a great, great performer this month. So let me know if you have any questions. Email me, info at wealthytrades.com. Make it a great day. Have a great weekend.